now the topic before us is your roadmap to understanding direct and indirect exchange rates foreign exchange rate can be quoted in two main ways direct quote and indirect quote to understand direct quote and indirect quote we take an example we are from india and here the currency is or the legal tender for domestic currency is indian rupee we want to visit some other country say usa and the currency of usa is us dollar which is a foreign currency for an indian so in the case of direct quote of foreign exchange rate direct quote comes as domestic currency over foreign currency domestic currency divided by foreign currency when we are giving the direct quote it means that how much of domestic currency is needed to purchase how much of domestic currency is required to purchase one unit of foreign currency if we take the example of india indian rupee and us dollar what is the exchange rate direct exchange quote it is 82.83 inr and here comes 1 usd this is the direct quote here we are using inr over usd value of inr is 82.83 here we are we will get to get 1 us dollars we will be paying 82.83 that is we will be required to pay 82.83 indian rupee to get one unit of other currency here we are talking about other currency which is us dollar so we will be paying 82.83 indian rupee to get one us dollars next is indirect quote in case of indirect quote indirect quote is by way of foreign currency over domestic currency here we are basically asking how much foreign currency can we buy how much of foreign currency can we buy with one unit of domestic currency now here we are talking about indian rupee and us dollar we are from india so here what will be us indirect quote will be us dollar over indian rupee usd oblique inr so what is us dollar is here the what is the value one us dollar is equal to 82.83 so here usd over inr what is what will happen it is 0.012 so with we will have we can buy 0.012 we can purchase or buy 
0.012 of US dollars with one unit of in Indian currency or one Indian rupee. This is the indirect quote. In the forex market, foreign exchange market, when we are quoting exchange rates, we normally use direct quote. That is, we will have to pay this much of domestic currency to purchase one unit of foreign currency or one unit of another currency. We normally use direct quote. So, why we use direct quote? Because it is easy for a person to understand. Suppose we want to purchase Canadian dollar. So, we will say that we will have to pay 61.04 Indian rupee. We will have to pay 61.04 Indian rupee to purchase one Canadian dollar. So, it is a direct quote. Normally, we, we people use direct quote of foreign exchange rate. Now, the topic before us is a closer look at sources of foreign exchange supply. First is exports. When we do exports, suppose we are from India and we export to Japan, exports. As already told that in the case of exports, mostly the will of the exporting country or the will of the exporting businessman prevails. If the exporting country or the exporter says that I will receive the payment in your currency, that is in the case of the importing currency, I will receive the your currency in return for goods which I have sent to you, then it results into the inflow of foreign exchange. That is, when exports take place, there may be inflow of foreign exchange. Now, in case of certain exports, some countries may insist that the payment may be made in their domestic currency. Then, when the tourists visit our country from abroad, it results into the supply of foreign exchange because they will generally spend their foreign currency for food, local expenses, buying other goods and services. When the foreigners make investment in our country to purchase buildings, industries, or some other land, then foreign currency or foreign exchange comes into our country. This is the source of supply of foreign exchange. When we get loans from the rest of the world, that is from other foreign governments or foreign banks, we may get loans. The foreign currency or foreign exchange comes into our country. There is supply of foreign exchange. Then there are persons who are from our country but working abroad. Their families are living back in the home country. So the workers of our country who are working abroad, they may be sending money to their families in the home country. So this results to the inflow of foreign exchange or supply of foreign exchange. Sometimes we receive grants and donations from abroad. It may be unilateral transfers or some sort of grants for investment purpose, some specific purpose. Some donations may be received by our country from the rest of the world. It results also into the supply of foreign exchange. It is quite possible that some of our business houses may be having certain properties abroad. When they sell their properties or businesses abroad, they
they will receive foreign currency. So when there is asset sale in foreign country by the domestic entities, it may result into the supply of foreign exchange. Now we will form the supply current of foreign exchange. This is the supply curve of foreign exchange. Forex rate in relation to domestic currency. This is the quantity of foreign exchange supplied. This is x axis, this is y axis. If the price of a foreign currency is, we are here, we will take the example of say Indian rupee and US dollar. At present, suppose the price of one US dollar is 83 Indian rupee. So, if at present the forex rate or the price of foreign currency in relation to Indian currency is 83. Suppose the quantity of foreign exchange supplied is 1000. If the price increases or the forex rate increases to 85, it may also increase to say 1300. The quantity of foreign exchange supplied, it also increases. There is a direct relationship as the price or of foreign exchange or the forex rate increases, supply increases. Though we have formed it in the form of a straight line, it is for simply to make the concept simpler. That is, you understand the direct relationship between supply and forex rate. This is the simple understanding. But in actual reality, the form of supply curve may be something like this. It may not be a straight line. It may be in the form of this one. Why this one? This is at this price. This may be 1000. And when the price increases, it may be this one. This is 83 and this is 84 and it may be this one. Today, this is in the form of a curve, supply curve is this one because when the price of forex currency increases, exporter will receive more. For example, if there is a businessman who is supplying goods to USA for say rupees 1000 US dollars, if the price of the forex rate increases for the same goods supplied, he will receive 84,000 rupees for the same goods. Goods are supplied worth rupees US dollar 1000, he will be receiving more money in the form of foreign currency. So he will feel incentivized. So he will ex bring, bring, uh, export more goods so that he can give more money in the form of currency, uh, domestic currency. As the price of foreign exchange is increasing, price of US dollar is increasing, but there is a limit to which the business production capacity can be increased by the business or there is a limit to which the goods can be produced. So slowly and slowly the increase in production or the level of the goods which can be exported comes to decrease. It may not increase after a certain point or there may be decrease in the 
quantity which can be increased with the increase in price of foreign exchange. So, this is the reason that though we take the normally take the supply curve as a straight line, this one straight line, normally it is in the form of a curve. It is important to note that supply curve as well as the demand curve, shape of supply curve as well as demand curve of foreign exchange, shape of both curves depends on the various factors such as government intervention, trade agreements between two countries and speculative trading in the international forex market. Thanks for watching. If you like our course, please spare some time to give a star rating to our course.